A rather interesting treatment of Newton's law of universal gravitation is as follows. First, we'll start with Newton's law of universal gravitation. That is, that we have g, mass of the first object, mass of the second object, over their separation squared. Of course, this will produce a curve. And if we look at the curve from the radius of the planet out, it will fall as 1 over r squared to 0. And although we're limited by the planet, what we have is we could go inside of the planetary radius, and we can see that mathematically this will continue. We'll use this momentarily. Previously, we've seen the gravitational potential energy is defined as mgh. This makes a couple of assumptions. First, that h is going to be close to the surface of the planet, and second, that g will be a constant. Now we know due to Newton's law of universal gravitation that the acceleration due to gravity, the gravitational field, can actually be calculated as g m over r squared. And this will be at the surface where we have capital R. So now we can look at what happens if we want to update this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take mgh, but we're going to make some replacements. And so this gives us, as we've seen, the gravitational potential energy is g, mass of the planet, mass of the object, over r. And we give a negative sign because we're going to deal with potential energy wells. And so now we get that the potential energy is zero when r goes to infinity. So now we can consider the escape velocity. So for any planet or other object, and we'll treat a spherical one with mass m and radius r, there's going to be an escape velocity, that is a velocity whereby when you're launched away from the object, you can never come back. And what we're going to see is that's going to be described by the gravitational potential energy being equal to the negative kinetic energy. And so when we set that up, what we're able to do is we're able to see that the mass of the object cancels, and then we can solve for v, and what we get is that we're going to have the square root of 2g mass of the object over the planetary radius, assuming we start on the planet. And if we look at the escape velocity for Earth, we're dealing with about 11 kilometers per second. What this leads to is we can now take the object, same mass, but we're going to shrink the radius. We're going to have a new radius, r prime. And we know that the fastest thing in the universe is the speed of light, or the universal speed limit is the speed of light. And so if we set our escape velocity equal to the speed of light, we see this equation. If we rearrange, we get r prime, and we have an expression for r prime based on the mass of the object. Everything else is a constant. And this is what's known as a Schwarzschild radius, and this gives us a classical black hole.